the blank content i refresh the file i keep on writing content and without much efforts it updates the character count and all we had to do is hello and welcome to the immigrant programmers channel this is pranav and today we are going to talk about a very minimalist javascript library called alpine.js i am actually very excited about this video because here we are going to discuss alpine which can potentially replace libraries like jquery or even other javascript libraries like angular react or vue which you usually use in your while developing a website in the front end if you regularly build sites that requires some sprinkling of javascript on your ui to give a better user experience this video is for you however before going into the nitty gritties of this library i have to come clean in front of you guys even i didn't know ab about this library a few days ago until i stumbled upon this article by ryan chandler who basically is trying to explain how we can do a character count component with alpine js and i thought what the hell is alpine js i've never heard about it so i went through this article i learned how it was being used and then from one article i went to another and from that one to another and then i realized that wait alpine js might really be on to something if you have a look at this table you will actually see the difference in file size between alpine and other commonly used libraries like many other developers we usually overcomplicate our workflow what we do is we go to the latest libraries we go to the best libraries we can find online we see that okay react angular and vue hit up on highest search ranks and we say well i think we should use that library but i think that's a wrong approach because in many cases those libraries are an overkill and nothing else frameworks like angular react i'm not trying to take anything away from them i actually use them on a day to day basis and i actually have all my code base in angular in one of the projects but what i'm trying to say is that there are some websites that don't need those complex and advanced frameworks because they really add to the size and you can actually see this in the table right in front of you well if you're thinking if you should use alpine in your next project let me clear a few things up for you you should only reach out for libraries like alpine when your website doesn't have a lot of data manipulation it doesn't have validation it doesn't have to go through numerous api calls to fetch data and show them to the user after a lot of complexities for those i would really really recommend you to use vue react or angular or any similar framework that you're a fan of but you should definitely reach out for alpine when you have to do basic manipulation on the dom under some conditions you have to append classes on user interaction and listen to some events and alter the ui i think in those scenarios alpine is the best friend so without any further ado let's get started with an actual example for that i have opened the docs and it says to install it i can simply import this script into the head which i've already done over here on the left hand side of the screen and now i'll go through the first example obviously we'll build a better example we'll build a better website in the end but i'm just going through the very basics in order for you to understand how the documentation has recommended us to get started and what is the most basic example we may be able to go through very quickly so we have a drop down model let's just copy it i'll go through this a little later but i just want to show you how it works and if the import is done the correct way so i refresh my page and if i click on this button i see the drop down body if i click again it goes away so perfect we know that it's working fine as you can see in the code there are some things that come from alpine which are not native html as i told you x data at click x show etc so x data is basically the data we pass into the component it basically has an object and that object can have values that object can even have some functions and basically the div or the component in this case will use that object and on the click of this button basically we are saying that the open should be equal to true so on that what happens in the background we have an unordered list which is basically a drop down body and it 
displays depending on the value of the open variable. So if the open is true, we will actually see the UL or the list. And whenever we click away from the drop down body or this UL, the open is assigned a value to be false. And what it does in the rest retrospect is that this is hidden again. So if we click on open drop down, we see that we have a body, we have an unordered list. And if I click anywhere else on the screen, it goes away. So it was pretty simple and you can already see the power of this library. Let's go through a little more complicated example. Let's build a character counter with Alpine in which I'll basically have a text area and below that I'll have the number of characters that are left for you to enter and we'll copy that from Twitter. We'll allow them to enter 180 characters and we'll display them the count on every input they do below the text area. So let's start with it. I'll create a div and to that div I'll give x data and I actually installed IntelliSense for my VS code and you can do the same so that it gives you relevant options. So I have x data inside that I'll pass an object. Let's say we have some content which is blank right now and we have a limit which is 180. Going inside, we have a text area. And below that, we'll have a paragraph. That sounds good. Uh, I have actually added some styling beforehand, but you don't need to worry about it. It's basically Alpine's tutorial, and that is what you should worry about. And that is what I'm going to teach you in this video. So here, here we want something like you have X characters left and X will basically be the difference between the contents length and the limit. So let's go ahead and write actually a span, which will have remaining. After that, we because we actually want to calculate the difference between the limit and the content, what I'll do is I'll create a remaining function, which will basically return me the difference between the limit and the length of the content. I should be able to call it, but not like this. I'll have to use, let's see what do we have here. We have x data, x init, x on. Now these are some events. I'll probably use x HTML and call this inside so, uh, in, inside the span. So basically I'm hoping that it would, inside the span's HTML, it would basically render what I'm returning from here. So I'll save it and just see if it actually does what I was thinking. And yes, we are successful. It actually prints the difference right now. And let's see if we add, it doesn't change anything because our interface, our HTML file or Alpine doesn't know what we have inside the text area, doesn't know what the content is because the content never changed from the very beginning. If I add some dummy text in the content and save it and rerun it, you see I have 175 characters left, but again, there's nothing in the text area. How can I bind this content variable with my text area? Basically, I can use the model x dash model and assign and pass the content over here. And it probably does what we wanted to do all along. So here we have it. Let's start with the blank content. I refresh the file. I keep on writing content and without much efforts, it updates the character count. And all we had to do is calculate using this remaining method 
pass all this component data inside our div in the X data element. And here we have a pretty good working application, which basically tells us uh, how many characters you have entered or how many characters you can enter at the moment. In the end, I just want to say that if you learn anything new, if this video helped you in learning anything new today, just hit the like button. Also add in the comment section down below if you would like me to create an actual playlist on Alpine so that you can go through each and every aspect of Alpine without going through the documentations. I will actually consider it if I have some doc uh, comments down below. Also hit the subscribe button so that our videos can be pushed to you more by the YouTube algorithm. Because we are a new channel, we need your support and thank you very much for your time. Have a nice day.